Welcome to Contemporary Retirement. Contemporary Retirement is a public interest program focused on the retirement community. Every program has segments on legal, financial, and health issues affecting the retirement community. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored in part by a major grant from the Family Heritage Trust Company. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored by Family Heritage Trust Company. The Family Heritage Trust Company is an independent bank chartered trust company established by local professionals to provide fiduciary services including fee-based investment advice, trust services, retirement planning, and tax planning. The Family Heritage Trust Company is committed to client service in our communities. For more information, call the Family Heritage Trust Company at 301-631-5900. Contemporary Retirement is sponsored in part by a grant from R. Thomas Murphy & Associates, P.C. R. Thomas Murphy & Associates is one of Franklin County's leading law firms, emphasizing estate, trust, elder law, and medical assistance planning. Welcome to the Is It Legal feature on Contemporary Retirement. This segment focuses on various legal issues affecting the retirement community. My guest today is Tom Murphy from the R. Thomas Murphy Law Offices with offices in Waynesboro, Chambersburg, and McCallsburg. Welcome to the show, Tom. Good morning, Mike. Tom, you know, when we see powers of attorney, we see there's a comfort style power of attorney that people like. The power of attorney says, I appoint somebody in the event of my incapacity. Right. Now, when you appoint in the event of incapacity, does that power of attorney has any current value? Well, not really. I mean, because if you're alive kicking and, and have full capacity, it's not effective. And so it, it ends up being a real problem for most families. And they say, well, why would it be a problem? Because I don't mind somebody being able to act if I don't have capacity. And the problem is establishing what is incapacity. Well, exactly. That's the heart of this. And who determines it? Is that a legal determination by a judge or is that a, a medical determination by some physician? Well, and part of the problem is, is that, you know, physicians today don't spend a lot of time with customers and their right. clients, patients, and they're not very <laughs> interested in, in signing off on legal documents that could create significant financial exposure for them by certifying somebody incompetent, except through court proceedings where they're protected. Exactly. And, and even worse, I mean, it's just the day-to-day -day practicality. What if you need something on a Saturday afternoon and, and you can't get in to see that physician for three, four days or more? Well, and I find that most people are very circumspect about accepting a physician certificate anyway. They really want to see a judicial determination. Right. So it sounds right, but it doesn't work. Well, I agree. And, and worse yet, you're putting your faith in, in trust in someone when you're least able to defend yourself. So we always have the query is if you don't trust them now, why would you trust them when you're completely defensive? Yeah, I say yeah. if you don't trust your kids when you, when, they, when you don't have capacity, you know, why are you trusting them anyway? So uh, we challenge people every day that if you want that power of attorney to be effective and to be usable in a, in a manner that's likely to have efficacy, it has to be effective immediately. Oh, I agree. And, and then, then you don't have the burdens of not only trying to operate with the power of attorney, but also getting it started. And then you see the power of attorney written, well, I appoint my spouse in the event of my spouse's incapacity, then one or more of my children. Well, you have the same problem. How do you establish the incapacity of the spouse so that the children can then act? Well, exactly. So your children are faced with proving a negative. And if the, the parents are just traveling and unable to communicate, it's very difficult. One of the problems that we have with incapacity, and let's use dementias by way of example, it's not an event, it's a process. That process can take years from its onset until the person is legally incapacitated, right. but oftentimes during that process, they're making bad decisions. Well, exactly, and so it's not a definitive bright line thing, and, and so in some cases you'll have a, a person who's very good at certain points in the day and other times terrible. And so that, that's a very hard thing to pinpoint. Yeah, and so use that incapacity standard, oftentimes good in the morning, bad in the afternoon. So it means dad's my power <laughs> of attorney in the morning, but he's not my power of attorney in the afternoon. Exactly. And it just creates too many challenges to be effective. And so our basic challenge is you have no business signing that document unless you have complete confidence in the people that you're appointing. Absolutely. And if you don't have complete confidence, that person has no business being on that document. Few things in life are as important as family. Leave your insurance worries to us, Wright Gardner. Call or visit our website to learn how we can make insurance simple and more affordable. Every life that meets its end leaves a heart for love to mend. Sister, brother, family, friends are left to carry on. When the loss seems more than you can bear, it's nice to know that we'll be there. A double save by
Call Ed Lowe to help put your mind at ease. Welcome to the special guest feature on Contemporary Retirement. This segment focuses on various issues which are of importance to the retirement community. My guest today is Brad Sell, Executive Director of Washington County Community Foundation. Welcome to the show, Brad. Mike, thanks. It's always good to be here. You know, Brad, I still, even after all of these years, when I say Community Foundation, most people just kind of look at me with a blank stare as to what the heck is that. So why don't you give us the Reader's Digest version? Well, people at least do recognize the name nowadays, but our mission is to promote philanthropy for the benefit of Washington County. And we do that mainly through the creation of endowment funds. We want people to give back in a community where they made, that made their livelihood and uh, create an endowment fund to support their favorite nonprofit organizations. That's it in a nutshell. What is an endowment? Well, an endowment is a fund in which the principal is always protected, the original gift that the donor makes, uh, and only earnings on the fund are what's distributed back to the nonprofit of their choice. Um, and so it goes on in perpetuity and creates a family legacy of giving. Now, to use a very simple example, and not to suggest that you have to have $100,000, but to just mm -hmm. make it simple, what would be the basic spending policy if a person created a $100,000 account? Well, we have a spending discipline of 5%, so that normally we'd be talking about a $5,000 distribution on a $100,000 fund. But over time, through appreciation and good money management, you're going to wind up giving away many more times the original $100,000, and that's what's so great about an endowment fund. Now, it's very interesting because many of the public would think, well, you know, we're out with CDs and so forth, and if we were spending 5%, we would be invading principal. But in fact, the investment return of the Community Foundation in the last 10 years has well exceeded 5%. Yeah, that's right. In fact, uh, we're proud to say that we're one of the top performing community foundations in the country. Uh, over the last five years, our return has been uh, about 14.73% net of all fees. So we've been extremely lucky. Well, and that also then says you can, in fact, sustain a 5% distribution pattern with a, you know, in fact, there's mathematical modeling that suggests that you ought to be able to sustain it. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, this isn't just a haphazard uh, guess. There's a lot of research that goes into this, and we have a, an extremely sophisticated um, investment firm and investment committee on, on the board of directors. So, we, you know, we know what we're doing. All right, so I uh, started in 1997 with $9,000. Where are you today? Uh, today we have over 250 funds, and our assets are over $31 million. And this year it's quite possible for our fiscal year 2015 that we're going to distribute uh, $2 million in grants and scholarships back to the community. Now let's talk a little bit about that, because I know most of our viewers are sitting here saying, well, that's really great, except I don't have truckloads of money. I'm not a person who could actually participate in the Community Foundation. Let's talk about some ways that they could. Well, and it's a, it's a misconception because we still try to make it possible for, quote, the little guy to get involved. And we will allow them to create a named endowment fund for $5,000, and we will allow them five years at $1,000 a piece to work their way up to that $5,000 level, and they can create a named endowment fund uh, in, their, in their name. Now, do they have to go by specific guidelines as to which charity could get it? That's the neat thing about the foundation is we don't have an agenda. Our, our goal is to let the donor achieve whatever their intent is so they can name the organization that they would like to benefit with the endowment fund or they can create a community fund and then the, the community foundation's grants committee will decide how that money gets allocated. So it can be your church, it could be your Boy Scout troop, it could be your little league, it could be anything that was important to you. Uh, and one or several, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, now, you know, oftentimes people say, you know, but I don't have a lot of money while I'm alive. But they are quite surprised to find out that the biggest growth in the community foundation over the next 30 years is going to be bequest when a person no longer needs the money. Well, it's the easiest gift to make, Mike, if you don't need the money, uh, you know, when you die. It's easy to make a gift of, of a bequest to the community foundation in your will. Um, and then you can support the organizations that you want to support and create that family legacy of giving after you're gone. You know, and oftentimes I find families with you know the the moving around of family members and so forth that they don't have any children or any significant family within the community yet this community was very important to their lives and so sometimes we'll see families with four children might say okay 20% of the community foundation you know to represent 
our involvement in this community and the other 80% divided among their four children. And what's neat about that is uh, the, the way the original community foundation movement started back in Cleveland in 1914 was an attorney who wanted to give back to his community, but he said to himself, I'm not going to know what those needs are 20, 30, 40 years down the road, but this organization will still be in existence and they're going to know what's important. Uh, and they can give to a community endowment fund that will support the community long after they're gone and make the needs really cr uh, critical. Well, and, and we've seen that in a lot of different ways. And so you might say, I want to give money for the benefit of a specific organization, but that organization may only have a term of 20, 30, 40 years into the future. And so you can write that agreement that says, if that organization ceases to exist, mm -hmm. find another organization doing similar things and give them the money on it. An and end. that's why there's so much flexibility involved here in, in helping donors to achieve what it is they want to achieve with their money after they're gone. So how can they learn more information? Well, they can give me a call at 301-745-5210, or they can go to our website, which is www.cfwcmd.org. Uh, Just go to Washington County Community Foundation yeah. and Google it. <laughs> Google it. That's right. <laughs> Thanks always for taking time to Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. Tranquility at Fredericktown Assisted Living and Memory Care provides a warm, home-like atmosphere that promotes daily life enrichment. At Tranquility, our medical director is a geriatric physician. Our professionals support and understand the various stages associated with Alzheimer's and dementia. We have on-site physical, occupational, and speech therapists, as well as around-the-clock licensed nurses. For more information, give Tranquility at Fredericktown a call today, because everyone deserves great care. Let us do the caregiving, so you and your loved one can embrace life again. you're supposed to be working in the yard. But Dad, just one more bit on HurleyAuctions.com. If you haven't visited HurleyAuctions.com, you don't know what you're missing. Whether you're buying or selling, antique cars, tractors, boats, or real estate, you can do it all at HurleyAuctions.com. Get to know Dr. Carrie Hesley at Diagnostic Imaging Services. What I find most rewarding is caring for women through our Women's Imaging Center. We have a caring staff that will ease patients through an ultrasound, bone densitometry, breast biopsy, or a mammogram. Our health team is sensitive to emotions involved in women's imaging and understands that every woman is at risk for breast cancer. Providing the community with a center that is so dedicated to breast health and the imaging needs of women is something special. DIS Women's Imaging Center, providing women with progressive care. Welcome to Contemporary Health Scene. Contemporary Health Scene focuses on the health issues affecting the retirement community. With me today is Tom Ryford, who is a volunteer at hospice and is also a committee member on the Leadership Campaign Committee for Doe's House. Welcome to the show, Tom. Well, thank you very much, Michael. I'm glad to be here. All right. Now, you know, hospice, first of all, even though you're involved with Washington County, is involved really in every county in the United States. Well, that's true. End-of-life care is something that is in every county, whether you're in Franklin County or down in the eastern panhandle or uh, east and west. There are hospice organizations in virtually every county. In uh, Washington County that I'm directly involved in, there's a lot of wonderful efforts to move hospice forward. And uh, one of the efforts is the Doeys House, which is a hospice house that we don't have here in Washington County. We're raising money to try to get this going. And it's been an effort that's taken a long time, but we hope to break ground actually just about one year from now. Now, of course, Frederick does have a hospice house, yes. but the adjoining counties north and south in Pennsylvania and West Virginia do not, and this house is going to support them as well. Well, there is a new hospice house in the eastern panhandle, and uh, you've just illuminated a point that a lot of people in many areas don't have a hospice house, and they have to go down the road somewhere, which is not only inconvenient, but in many cases is a hardship, uh, both for the individual involved and for the families involved. To have a centralized hospice house named for Doey Glessner, Doey's house, I think is going to be terrific for the residents not only of Washington County, but the entire area. Now, hospice is involved in fundraising. Now, oftentimes people think it's just a purely an insurance product and it's all taken care of by insurance products, but in reality, many of the services are not. Well, that's true, Michael. Um, yes, a large part of any medical care or any end-of-life care, that palliative care that happens at, at the end of everyone's lives, 
is covered by insurance, but then there's always an amount that is not. And that's very important to realize that hospice is always in this fundraising effort to be able to provide that appropriate, dignified end-of-life care. We've been doing fundraisers for years to try to be able to have a growing and appropriate hospice effort here in Washington County, and that helps all the residents in the entire four-state area. To have a hospice house is something that needs to be built. Of course, a capital campaign is not covered by any insurance, and we're trying to raise about $5 million. We are $3 million right now in being able to get the total amount raised. We're very close to, to uh, getting the, the whole amount. We have got a wonderful location not far from the Meredith Medical Center, and it's going to be a wonderful house. And it's really the same reason why you have to raise money for hospitals and everything else, because the reimbursement system doesn't give you any bells and whistles, doesn't give you any capital, so you've got to create the vehicle to provide those services. Yes, sir, that is correct. And you do have to provide, the, as a famous person once said, there has to be a there there. You know, I went to Washington County, there was nothing there, but there is a there there with a beautiful hospital, and soon right next to it is going to be a great hospice house. It's high time that this community had a hospice house. We've been planning it for over 10 years and being able to move this forward is terrific. So not only will it be built, but we continue to have fundraising to be able to have uh, an endowment so that um, people have their hospice care at the end of their lives taken care of. Now you have several fundraisers coming up. Sound, some of them sound like a lot of fun. Tell us about them. Yes, we do have several fundraisers coming up. One big one is on August the 22nd. It's uh, at the Milestone Farm, that beautiful historic uh, Milestone Farm owned by Mr. Donald Bowman, uh, not far from the intersection of uh, I-81 and Williamsport, which is right next to the intersection of I-70. This is a lot of fun. It's sort of an antique car and classic car cruise in, and it is August 22nd. It's called the CNO Canal Days Cruise In Car Show. There's a lot of information on the Hospice of Washington County website. It's in memory of Joan Bowman. It uh, starts at 10 in the morning, goes to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And some people probably know that Mr. Bowman has a huge car museum, but it's a private collection and rarely open to the public. In fact, it is the largest collection of rare and historic automobiles owned by any individual in the state of Maryland. And on that day, it'll be open to the public, August 22nd. Urge everybody to come. Bring your antique car if you got one. There'll be probably over a thousand vehicles on display uh, on August 22nd, Hopewell Road in Williamsport. You have a couple of others coming up as oh, well. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, there's one on September the 12th that's called Dazzle for Doey's House. Uh, we have a, a lot of meetings all year round to bring this uh, event to the public. Uh, it is a wonderful fundraiser, kind of a gala event. It also is at the historic Milestone Farm. And then in November, we have our big annual hospice banquet. It's called the Gift of Hospice. This year, it's on November the 10th. It is a fundraiser, but it's also a way that we illustrate the importance of hospice. What is it that we do? What is it that uh, we hope to gain? Um, it's a bit of a fundraiser because it's also a night uh, that a lot of people provide their pledges for the whole year to come, and that is called the gift of hospice. Tom, thanks for taking time to appear on our program. Sounds Thank you, like Michael. A lot There's of great stuff. A lot of on. exciting things happening. Thank you. Great. More from Contemporary Retirement after these messages. People don't realize it takes a lot to care for a family member in your home. John's dad was very headstrong, so I think that was a, a lot for him to get over and try to come to terms with that he had terminal illness. I would recommend everybody to get hospice involved at the get-go. When, when you first learn about it, get it set up, it, it's going to make it, I mean, it, it's terrible what you're going through already, but it's going to make it easier for you in the long run because they, we couldn't have done it without them. Call hospice today, Hospice of Washington County, when time matters most. I wanted to be a teacher ever since first grade. Without the Mary and Ruth Smith scholarship, I would not be successful as a growing adult. Do you wish to make a difference in the lives of others? You can, and you don't have to be wealthy to impact future generations. Start your legacy at the Community Foundation and impact lives just as Mary and Ruth Smith have done. Thank you to the Community Foundation for believing in me and providing me the opportunity to become successful with my goals. 
Albright, Crumbacker, Mal, and I tell are a full-service firm that provides elder care services, including managing incoming bills, bill payment, depositing checks, balancing bank statements, and preparing, planning, and filing personal tax returns. Put your mind at ease and call us today. Welcome to the Making Sense feature on Contemporary Retirement. Making Sense focuses on the financial issues affecting the retirement community. With me today is Ed Lowe from Northwestern Mutual. Welcome to the show, Ed. Thank you. Good morning. Now, you know, one of the interesting things about Northwestern Mutual, if I said one of the operative features there, any policy issued by Northwestern Mutual, who owns the company? Uh, the policy owners, the clients. It's a mutual company. Owned so by it doesn't pay its profits out to stockholders. It pays its profits out either in dividends, growth of the capital reserve, or perhaps lowering the premium costs for the customers on a continuing premium basis. That's correct. Dividends are used to, again, reduce premiums, increase cash values, et cetera. So when you buy a policy, you're an owner? You're an owner. Okay. Now, you know, we've been pretty universally, and you and I have a 20-year history of going after some of the inappropriate sales of annuities that we've seen in this community. And many times we see these annuity sales both have huge commissions associated with them, uh, what we would consider illusory bonus <laughs> payments on them, and then suddenly somebody coming back three years later or four years later saying they need to buy a new one. What happens when they buy the new one? Well, when they buy the new one, most of the original, with the original annuity sale, there are probably some sort of surrender charges that are certainly not gone in that three or four year period. And so they're going to lose some of their money right off the top. The, the rep who sells that to them is going to earn a brand new commission. There's new charges on the new annuity. And oftentimes they'll use this bonus yield to sort of shield the appearance of the loss of taking the early withdrawal, saying, well, we added more to it. But it's not real because you don't get that money except on very extended payouts. Very extended payouts. So if you had a need for a lump sum distribution or to surrender that annuity, that bonus would be taken away. And you would have the early withdrawal charges imposed both from the earlier policy. You'd actually see the sum <laughs> impact of that as well as the ones on the new policy. That's, that's correct. And then you also have to be careful what sort of funds that the, perhaps the, the money's in, particularly in the senior market, uh, those funds could be too risky. Well, oftentimes when I have people that have some of these annuity products and I ask them, do you own any stocks? They tell me no. And I say, have you taken a look at what the investment is in this annuity product? Yeah, in many cases it's, it's too aggressive because the, perhaps uh, the rep is trying to get some growth out of it for the client and then they could end up having losses and, it, and their timeline being short as a senior, that's not a very good thing at all. Well, and part of it is it's the only way they can grow that policy enough to create the illusion that they didn't lose money on it. Because when you pay out a bunch of commissions and if the policy ever gets back to break even, it had to do a lot better than a 1% or 2% CD rate in order to get that money back so that the person is at least back to even. And the only way they can do that typically is in the market. Right, and so there's, there's the element of risk and, and it's just not, not a good sale for a senior in many cases. Now, you know, one of the interesting things is, is that while I don't like annuities generally, and many financial pundits say there's, you know, annuities are to be avoided, as is always the case, it's never, never, it's just in most cases it's not appropriate or these products are sold in an inappropriate manner. However, having a guaranteed life income stream for some people is appropriate. And one of the interesting things, many times they don't need it today. And so Northwestern has created a very unique product that allows a person to consider an income stream with a portion of their retirement income. Tell us how it works. Well, how it works is it's a deferred income, a lifetime income annuity that someone can put money into at whatever age. A lot of people will look at that in their mid-50s perhaps to move some of their money out of the market uh, again, to reduce their element of risk. That annuity income can start at whatever age they choose. They so have they some flexibility pick 60, to move it. 65, 70, whatever they sure. would choose. Yeah, let's say they pick 65 and they decide they want to start at 62. You can. They pick 65, they want to wait to 68. That's okay, too. All right, but what it does then is that that money is put into that account. You don't start drawing it immediately, but it is an investment account. It's an investment account, but it has zero risk because it's in our general account, the exact same account that our life insurance is in. Well, there isn't zero risk because it is a company. However, Northwestern <laughs> Mutual is considered the most financially stable company on the globe in terms of life insurance and might have a better credit rating than most countries in the world today. So, Well, but again, being in the general account, the money is guaranteed to move forward just like the life insurance is. So, the, so there's no, there's, there can be no loss on your money at all. Now, the fact is, is that your current dividend rate for a policyholder, meaning a person that owns a part of the company, is what? 
5.6%. And how long has it been that? It's been that for the past three years. And, and historically, that's a bit low for us, but it, it's, a, you know, it's a combination of the economic times. So in that case, you put $100,000 in it. You know, there is a little bit of sales charge and so forth, but it would immediately start growing. And so then when you chose the income stream, it would not only pay out the, based upon the increased number that was there, but you're also getting the benefit of Northwestern's investment expertise. It might produce 5% additionally at that time. It's going to earn the dividends. And so while you're waiting for the income to start, those dividends are accruing to increase that income when you pull the trigger to start the income. When you pull the trigger to start the income, then the dividends will be used to increase that income over, over the years. Ed, sounds pretty interesting. How could they get a hold of you? Well, they can reach me at 301-733-5433. Thanks for appearing on our program. Thank you. Thank you from Contemporary Retirement. Remember a more carefree time? Leave your insurance worries to us, Wright Gardner. Call or visit our website to learn how we can make insurance simple and more affordable. These days it seems like everything's online and filling out claim forms and receiving and paying bills online isn't always easiest. That's why we at Quality First Insurance encourage you to just give us a call. Let us help. Hi there. I'm Paul Sweeney with Quality First Insurance and it's still just this simple. Our offices are open every weekday where you'll be able to call and speak to real live people. No detail was missed. I'm so glad that I turned to Quality First Insurance. I'd recommended Quality First Insurance to my friends who've been just as satisfied. If you're not happy with what you're paying for Medigap, or more importantly, not happy with your service, give us a try. We're locally owned, and we take the time to provide you with the best. We are Quality First Insurance, and our mission is to provide quality products to quality people. Pick up the phone and give us a call today at 800-745-1411.